This didn't start with the prophet Ezekiel. God began speaking to Abraham, and he made a promise, made a promise that all the world would be blessed through him. And in Genesis chapter 17, verse 7 and 8, he promises to be God to Abraham and to his descendants, all those who would come after him. And he is God no matter what, but he becomes God to a people through covenant, and he made a covenant with this people. And that covenant included all the land of Canaan as an everlasting possession. We know that they were scattered. We know he set conditions. He set conditions of obedience and disobedience. And when the people of Israel were disobedient, they were scattered. But Isaiah 11.11 11 says, I will gather them together a second time. A second time. We know that they've been scattered twice and twice they have returned. There is no scriptural third regathering. So they are there to stay. Amos chapter 9, verse 14 and 15 says, They will grow gardens and vineyards, Amen. and I will not pull them up again. Amen. They're there to stay. Amen. And Jeremiah 16, verse 14 and 15, we're living in the day when Jeremiah spoke up that one day God would no longer be known as the God who brought them out of the land of Egypt, Amen. but he'll be known as the God who brought them out of the land of the north and all the nations that they were scattered. Amen. Amen. That is our day. Amen. This is the day we are living in. And now 300,000 of these precious people have claimed their inheritance. They have claimed the land. Let me leave no doubt. Supporting a two-state solution. A Palestinian state within the heartland of Israel. The mountains of Israel. Puts you in direct opposition to the will and word of God. Amen. And in Amen. fact, you are calling God a liar. Amen. The Islamic Arab leaders want you to deny, to deny your faith and deny the validity of the word of God. And anyone who does this does not fear God. And if you have, you have no fear of God, you have no wisdom. And you have no wisdom, then you have no fear of God. The word of God. He didn't, it says, we just read, how many times did I read it? I have raised, I am for you, I will multiply you, I will cause, I will do this, God says. So anybody who thinks that this is an accident of history, a coincidence, or that they're illegally, is calling God a liar. Amen. Cities will be rebuilt. The cities are being inhabited again. Amen. All of Israel. But think of the ones in this region. They're too numerous to count. Just a few examples. Shiloh, Beth El, Ariel, the former location of Mount Gaash, Kiryat Arba. Again, 300,000 have returned to claim their inheritance. God-given inheritance. And the gifts and calling of God are irrevocable. The idea that the land belongs to someone else is one of the greatest lies ever told. Joseph Goebbels said, if you tell a lie big enough and keep repeating it, people will eventually come to believe it. Let me say it clearly. There has never been a nation of Palestine. Amen. 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 If anything, that nation exists in Jordan today. The Arabs from the region are from places from Albania to Yemen. For heaven's sake, Yasser Arafat was an Egyptian. Amen. <laughs> it's a lie. So what's the answer? What is the answer for Christians? I think many Christians and most Christian Zionists can quote Genesis 12.3. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who curse you. Amen. Probably everybody can quote it. That theme, by the way, goes through the entire book. It's not just one promise. It's a theme that runs throughout. There's no time to, to cover all the scriptures that speak of this theme. But today we must go deeper. We must go deeper than just saying we support Israel. Or even praying for the peace of Jerusalem, although that is important. But if we think we can ignore this issue. We are naive. We are extremely naive to ignore this issue. 
In fact, there are forces at work right now to try to stop us and stop all those who would love Israel. Listen to this. This week, no coincidence, I don't get Newsweek magazine, March issue, but this week I had an appointment. I sat down and picked up this magazine. After seeing this, I asked the owner if I could keep it. She said yes. I didn't steal it. <laughs> no coincidence, how to stop new settlements in Israel. And what was very alarming was these words here. Ideas. Trying to give this administration and our State Department more ideas as if they needed them. Like recalling the U.S. ambassador or signaling that the Prime Minister is not welcome at the White House anymore. Well, I think that's been accomplished. But then it goes on and it gets real personal. Church. Groups critical of Israel's West Bank policies have put forward other ideas, including denying tax-exempt status to U.S. nonprofits that help fund settlements. Let me declare it right now. We support, we have adopted a community in Samaria through Christian friends of Israeli communities about well, well over 10 years ago now, 13 years, we have adopted and support a community here at First Assembly. And you cannot serve God and mammon. Amen. And I believe the Word of God calls us to be a blessing to His people. Amen. Amen. How many pastors will stand? How many congregations will stand if their tax exemption is being threatened? We are going to stand. Amen. We will give. Hallelujah. We will continue to give to support God's people in Judea and Samaria. Let it be known. We must be completely, completely sold out to God's word and his way. Let me give you, I believe, another scriptural example. It's in Ruth. Christians, who should we? Besides our, Lord, besides our Lord Jesus, who should we be emulating? I want you to turn to the book of Ruth. Book of Ruth, chapter 1. You know the story. Naomi, Orpah, and Ruth all become widows. Their husbands are dead. <coughs> Naomi says to her two daughter-in-laws, who were Gentiles, you can go. I release you. Orpah. Not Oprah. Orpah. <laughs> she accepts. Things got tough. Things are tough now. Naomi says, go back to your people and your gods. I want to submit to you that I believe Orpah and Ruth represent the church today. They were not, they were not natural born Jews. We have a decision to make. Will we be Orpah or Ruth? Orpah, it got tough. And she left. Her tax exemption got taken, so she went home. <laughs> verse, chapter 1, verse 15, and she said, look, this is Naomi speaking to Ruth, who is clinging to her. Look, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, entreat me. Not to leave you, or to turn back from following after you. For whatever, wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God shall be my God. 